Hey guys, let's get started with 7.1 notes. We're going to be learning about the Pythagorean Theorem today. Our objectives are you will be able to find missing side of a right triangle, and you will be able to use the Pythagorean Theorem to solve problems. So go ahead and this video demonstration of the Pythagorean Theorem, I'm going to go ahead and link it in the description. So go ahead and take a second, pause this video, and watch the other one. It's about a minute and a half long. All right, so hopefully everybody had a chance to watch that. So why does the Pythagorean Theorem work? Explain it in your own words. So the video had talked about when we have a right triangle, and if we create the squares off each side, right? So we have a square there, square here, and then a square off of the hypotenuse. Um, and if we take the square of each of those and add up the two legs, we'll get the length will get the same as the hypotenuse. All right, so let's get into the right triangle. So a right triangle has one right angle. The side opposite the right leg is called the hypotenuse. And it is the longest side of the triangle. So that is important to remember that it is the longest side of the triangle. And then the other two sides are called the legs. So that will come in handy later uh, when we're just given three side lengths and we have to create that equation. And so knowing which side is the hypotenuse is important. And then also this right angle, always opposite of that hypotenuse for all the triangles. If that helps, we'll take this one down here. We can draw across opposite from the right angle. All right, so the Pythagorean theorem states that the sum of the squares of the, of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. No, this only works for right triangles. So that is important to remember is that we can only use the Pythagorean theorem with right triangles because right triangles are the only triangles that have a hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is opposite of that 90 degree angle of that right angle. All right, let's go ahead and try a couple examples. So first we should identify which one is our hypotenuse. So I'm gonna draw an arrow opposite of my 90 degree angle. So I have a K there. So I can do three squared plus four squared is equal to K squared, where three is A, four is B, and k would be c. So all I did was plug in those values into my equation. Now, if you tried this before I wrote it down and you wrote 4 squared plus 3 squared equals k squared, this will give us the same result. And I'll show us why. So let's go ahead and find these. So 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16 equal to k squared, which will give me 25 is equal to k squared. If we come over here, I'll have 16 plus 9 equals k squared, which still gives me 25 equals k squared. So as far as the a and the b, don't be concerned about which one's a, which one's b. Just know that you have to add the two squares of the side of the legs together. It doesn't matter which order that they're in. All right, and then, so we have this square. In order to get rid of that, I'm going to get the square root of both sides. So now I have k equals Five. So the length of that third side is 5. Alright, let's go ahead and try the second one, the second problem. Alright, opposite of the 90 degree is our y, so that's the singular one, so we know we're going to have y squared off to the right. Then I have 2 squared plus 4 squared. So 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 16, so remember it is 4 times 4, not 4 plus 4, or 4 times 2. Alright, four, or 4 plus 16 will give me 20 equals y squared. We can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And 20 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to go ahead and create a factor tree. So we can do 10 and 2. And then I can do 5 and 2. So I have a pair of 2s. And if we remember how that works, anything we have a pair of, we take out, put off to on the outside. Anything that is not circled is left under my radical. So 2 root 5 is equal to y. 
All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try number three and four. So we're gonna pause the video and try those two problems out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at these two and their solutions. All right, so for number three, we have to simplify radical. So we still have that in there. And then for number four, 225 is a perfect square, so we have 15. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at five and six. So I'm gonna first identify where my 90 degree is, so it's at angle A. And then I'm gonna go opposite to find my hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse in this one is 13. So I know that in my equation, I'm gonna be equal to 13 squared. All right, so AC does not have a variable. We can attach pretty much any number we want. Let's go ahead and use X. All right, so now I have X squared plus five squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, so 13 squared. All right, let's go ahead and start solving this. So we'll keep our X squared as is plus 25 is equal to 169. All right, so now we're gonna have to start doing some other inverse operations. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 25 from both sides, giving me x squared is equal to 144. So we had to do the extra step of moving one of the legs over with the hypotenuse. Now I can go ahead and take the square root to give me that x equals 12. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number six. So number six is special because it says write your answer as a decimal to one place. So it is important to read the instructions, whether it's asking for a simplified radical, which is what we did up here with number three, right? We kept it as a simplified radical. But number six, it does say to write it as a decimal so we can plug it into a calculator. Let's go ahead and set up our equation. Let's find out which one's the hypotenuse. So let's go opposite of the 90 degree. 12 is the hypotenuse, so I have 8 squared plus y squared is equal to 12 squared. So I now have 64 plus y squared equals 144. We go ahead and subtract 64 from both sides. I get y squared equals 80. Alright, so now we can take the square root, and since we are looking for a decimal, I don't have to worry about simplifying that. All I have to do is plug it into your calculator. So if we all have to take out our scientific calculator, we're going to go ahead and press the second button up to the top left, and then there's a button that will have the square root right above it. On my calculator, it says x squared, and then right above it, has the square root. Make sure you are not pressing the square root with the x there. So you do not want to press this one. That one will give us something else depending on what you plugged into your calculator previously. All right, and then we'll go ahead and plug in 80. And when you do that, then you can press your equal sign and we should get 8.9. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try number seven and eight. So with seven and eight, um, eight you're gonna also have to write in decimal form. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at seven and eight. There we go. All right, so eight, we should end up with x equals 14.7. If for any reason you wrote 14.7, Point six. I think the second number was a 9. So since we are rounding to the first decimal, we take the number right after, and then we would round up. So then we'd have 14.7 instead of 14.6. Okay, let's try a couple more examples. So this time we have some square roots thrown in there. And it wants our answers as a simplified radical, so I know I'm not going to plug it into the calculator. So we'll go opposite of the 90 degree. And H is our hypotenuse. So I now have 4 squared plus the square root of 3 squared is equal to H squared. 
So you might be like, okay, I know 4 squared is 16, but how am I supposed to find the square root of 3 squared? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we think about something that's being squared, such as our 4, right, 4 squared, that's going to be 4 times 4. Well, we're going to still apply that if we have the square root of 3 squared. That is still the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. When we're multiplying with square roots, we can go ahead and combine underneath. So that means I have the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 equals 3. So uh, a nifty thing about that is the square roots and squares, they are inverse operations, right? That's how we end up getting rid of this square is to take the square root. So, you can just cancel the two out. But it's good to know how we get there and how we can just end up canceling out and then we just end up with the number under the radical, so three. So now I have 19 equals h squared and now we'll go ahead and take the square root. So this is what I was talking about here. See how they kind of match up where we have a square root and a square. And all I'm left with is h, it's that same kind of process. And 19 is a prime number, so I can't simplify that any further. Okay, let's go and take a look at number 10. Number 10, so number 10 will go opposite of the 90 degree. All right, five is our hypotenuse. I'm gonna go ahead and make this missing side x. So that means I have two root five squared plus x squared equals 5 squared. All right, let's go ahead and see what we're going to do when we have a number out front, so a coefficient out front. So we're still going to apply 2 root 5 times 2 root 5. I'm going to take these coefficients and multiply them together, and then I'm also going to take under the radical and multiply those together, which will give me 25. All right, the square root of 25 is 5. Oops. So now I have 4 times 5, which gives me 20. So whenever you have that um, a coefficient out in front, you might want to write it down just to make sure that you aren't missing a step by accident or just squaring the square root. You need to make sure you're squaring the whole thing, which includes that coefficient out in front. So now I have 20 plus x squared is equal to 25. Go ahead and subtract 20 from both sides, and I get x squared equals 5. Take the square root, and x equals 5. Or, er, well, sorry, the square root of 5. Alright, I want you guys to go ahead and try 11 and 12. We're going to try 11 and 12, keeping it as a simplified radical. Alright, let's then take a look. Alright, so here's 11 and 12. 12 we are able to simplify to a whole number. 11, 57, we can simplify that, or we can't simplify, we can have factors of 3 and 19, but those are both prime numbers, and so therefore we can't go any further. So we can just leave it as a square root of 57. Alright, let's get into a look at number 13. So a triangle has side lengths of 6, 8, and 10. Is the triangle a right triangle? Explain your reasoning. So I want everyone to take a moment, pause the video if you need to, see if you can think of how you might be able to figure out if this is a right triangle or not. Alright, so we're still going to be using the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We just have to know which one is our hypotenuse, because that's the important one. Well, if you remember, the longest side is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to do 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. And if this ends up being a true statement, then yes, it is a right triangle. So let's see, we have 36 plus 64 is equal to 100. And if I add 36 and 64, I get 100. So yes, this is a triangle because we have a true statement with the Pythagorean theorem. Alright, and let's go ahead and check out our word problem. Each day Amy walks to school. She leaves her home and walks south seven blocks to a friend's house, then turn to the west and talk and walk twelve blocks to the school. At the end of the day, Amy walks directly from the school to her home. To the nearest tenth, one decimal place, how many blocks does Amy walk on her way home? 
So what this means, what we're trying to find, is the hypotenuse of this right triangle we just made, right? Because it's opposite of my 90 degree angle. So it did tell me already what the lengths of each side were. Let's go ahead and write it so we have it. So we have 12, 7 and 12. And if you needed to recount, you always can. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I can go ahead and plug that in to my equation. Let's go ahead and make it hypotenuse x. So I have 7 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. So that gives me 49 plus 144 equals x squared. And I'll get 193 equals x squared. If I go ahead and plug the square root of 193 into my calculator, I get x equals 13.9. So that means you walk 13.9 blocks. Alright, then B, how many blocks does Amy walk in one day for her round trip to the school and back home round to the nearest tenth? So for this one, we just want to count how many blocks she walks each way. So she first walks seven, then she walks twelve, and then she walks thirteen point nine. So if we go ahead and add all of those together, in total she walks thirty-two point nine blocks. Oh. Alright, and that's the end of 7.1. Make sure to watch this as many times as needed. If you need any help, please ask the teacher. Have a wonderful rest of your day.